lots of times on the main plate of machine, you put the go tell you how many cold machine has. <coughs> I'm going to ask you this question. We have a machine here, on the name plate put 208, 60 hertz, 175, 175 RPM. They don't put the number of four. How many four do you put here? Now this one, you can look at over that example, you can take four, right? You can from that example, I put it here. But how do you calculate it? I want you to calculate, here is a 208, 60, 175, 1755 RPM. Remind you from Sunday what is happened Sunday. We say when we have a DC machine, when we are going to start them because the back EMF at the beginning will be zero, 
when you put a big voltage on the machine, like 100 volts, armature of the machine is very, armature resistance of the machine is very small, it's gonna end up huge current. It's gonna burn the machine. What we need, we say, okay, we are gonna handle it this way. We say we have this source here, right? And let's put the breaker here, Vs. And we said, <coughs> we are gonna do it this way. We are gonna have a starter here, right? And this is there, right? And this one is gonna start from here, switch to this point, to this point, to this point, right? Let's call this one RS3, RST3. Let's call this one RST2. And let's call everything RST1. Initially, all the resistors are in the circuit, right? We are going to take them out one by one. From here, switch here, switch here, switch here, right? This is a three stage. It could be ten stage, you know what I'm saying? This is just an example, I believe. And here we have EA, IA, RA, right? And again, to remind you, <coughs> if you look at the uh, speed versus time, and current, armature current versus time, it was like this. It's not going to come down. And here, if you look at it, the armature current was like this. We are going to start from zero, jump to a maximum value. Let's call this one I max. And usually this one is come down to I n. Usually, it could be less even or more. I n is the nominal current of the machine. And we said every time it's going to do the same thing. Jump here, come here, jump here, come here. And here maybe we will not have enough resistance. Let's do something. Right? Now let's go through the example. Just a quick reminder. One more thing I want to before solving the problem. Look at this. Let's call this one, I call it T1. Let's call it T1, T2, T3. And it's this zero, T0, right? T1 negative <coughs> means epsilon before T1, right? And T1 positive means epsilon after that. T1, right? T1 negative and T1 positive, right? And look at this one. We have a back here that T is equal to K plus omega, right? How much is from the field and those kind of things? It doesn't matter where we are. Flux is constant, right? Omega, look at the omega. Omega is here, right? You know, in mechanical system, inertia is like an inductor in the electrical system, right? In current of inductor cannot jump, right? Current of inductor is continuous. Voltage of capacitor is continuous, right? A speed of an inertia is continuous. When you are driving your car, you cannot jump from 10 miles per hour to 100 miles per hour, right? You have to go through all the speed, between 10 to 100 to get to the 100, right? <coughs> the speed is continuous, right? My point is, T, T1 negative or T1 positive, the speed is almost the same. It's not almost, it's very, very, I can say it's the same, right? If the speed is the same, E is not going to change, right? E as T, E, T1 minus, is E and T1 minus is equal to E and T1 positive. Why? Because omega T1 minus is equal to omega T1 positive, right? But the speed is not changing. Basically, the back EMF also is not changing. It's a very, very short time. But see, you take the resistor out. You were here, you switch to here, right? This is a T1 negative, this is a T1 positive. Then you change this one from here to here, right? Now keep this figure. So, this is we have a machine, we have a DC machine, 10 kilowatt, 100 volt, 1,000 RPM, again, these are the name plate of the machine. Our armature is one, our armature is 
we are supplying <coughs> this machine with a 100 volt source. So VS is a 100 volt source. The connected machine to a nominal voltage of the machine. First, calculate the, the starting current of the machine without starter. I'm not going to put any starter in the circuit. I want to know how much is the starting current. Right? So basically, the circuit is like this. How much is the, is the first part? We are going to calculate the starting current of machine when there is no starter. There is no external resistance in the circuit. This is the ISP. How much is this one? Zero. Why? Because the machine is not moving. It's a stop, right? So I, how much is the I start? VS over RA, which is going to be 10 to 2,000 amps, right? VS is 100, RA is 0.1. But before moving to the next part of the question, how much is the nominal current of the machine? How much is the nominal current of the machine? I don't know, is it a lot or not? You know what I'm saying? So is the V P is equal to VI or I is equal to P over V, right? P over V. Let's say this is 5 volts, right? 
is not 5, I'm going to say it's 5. I just start to calculate this one, the first one. 2 ohm. So I'm going to get up 2 ohm in the first stage, all right? How much I have left? 3 ohm. Let's say the next stage is 1.5 ohm, right? So I'm going to get up another 1.5 ohm, right? How much I have left? 1.5. Let's say the next the next two stages I calculate both they are 1 ohm. So when I get rid of 1 ohm, how much I have left over? 0.5, right? Can I get rid of another 1 ohm? You know, what's going to happen? We get rid of whatever is left in the second, right? But if the leftover is more than 1 ohm, I have to go to another stage, right? So but because the last stage I'm calculating, I need 1 ohm to get rid of that. Right? I need 1 ohm to jump here, right? But how much I have? 0.5. Only I have only 0.5 left, left, right? So if I get it up, if I get it up one, I'm gonna jump here. If I'm gonna get it up 0.5, I'm gonna jump here, right? Because I'm getting up less resistance, right? So basically that's the reason I get this this one on the final stage. I just put here. It's somewhere between here and there. So now let's solve this issue. If you guys, uh, do you want to get a dress or we can go make a piece? Let me finish this example and we'll get a little bit of that, okay? <coughs> I'm going to design a starter for this machine. To limit the current, I want to current, limit the current I armature between I n and 2 I n during the start. During the start. That's my aim. So let's first calculate how much is the total resistance. I want to calculate RST1, right? I don't know how many we have. If they have four, maybe RST1, RST2, RST3, RST4, right? I don't know how many we have. I'm going to start with. So at the startup, at the startup, I'm gonna have a VS, right? RST1, right? Which is with all the resistors together, right? And I have a RA. And EA. And I know how much is EA? At the startup. I'm calculating at the startup. How much was EA? Zero. This is the I on at the start of how much is the IA? 2 IA. I said I want to limit it to 2 IA, right? I don't want to go more than 2 IA, right? 2 IA is the maximum current I can go here. I cannot go more than this. Limit it to 2 IA, right? So I'm going to put enough resistor to limit the current to 200 amps. I'm not going to let it go to 1000 amps, right? So 2 IA. How much is the IA? This is just for the startup. Be careful. There is no E. In the startup, there is no E, right? E is zero for the first stage, right? So how much is the RST? One. T1 minus. This is the minimum we are putting here, right? 